Howdy, IB. It's Miss Cash. Um, I want to talk about the disproof by counterexample, that section of the book. But before I do, um, there's one thing that I have seen frequently over the years, and I want to uh, caution you against that. Um, IB likes to do a lot of the, the show that. Um, and so what I find sometimes is that my kids will be like, oh, okay, well, let's let x equals 7. I don't know. And then we plug in 7, and we get 7 plus 2 times 7 plus 3 and um, is equal to 7 squared plus 5 times 7 plus 6. And they'll say, okay, so 9 times 10 is equal to 49 plus 35 plus 6. That's what, 41 um, plus 49 is equal to 90. They'll say, oh, 90 equals 90, therefore it's true. Well, this is what I like to call... Um, I like to call KD math, <laughs> okay? This is that Karen Dilliard, um, this is this is a test-taking strategy, which is fine in certain contexts, but it's not good math, okay? This is not how we would do the problem. What we would have to do would be to say, well, okay, x plus 2 times x plus 3 is equal to um, x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. I'm doing a problem that's kind of beneath our level, but to illustrate a point, um, which is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6, which was the other side of the equation. And now we have proved this to be true for every situation. Okay, so you cannot prove, here's the, the takeaway. You can't prove something to be true by just using one, a one example. All you have done is you have proved it for that one situation. You need to be able to prove it for every situation, okay? Um, however, if you're trying to disprove something, say this is the problem that they give you in the book. Um, this is their example. If, you, if they give you something and you um, want to disprove it, all it takes is one case to say, no, that doesn't work. All it takes is one counterexample. Okay, so on this particular problem, they say the values of n squared minus n plus 41 for some values of n element of the natural numbers are shown in the table. Okay, so they give you this, and then they, they say all, okay, so look at all of these numbers. We've got all these prime numbers. Life is grand, therefore, it must be prime for all, all the time. So they've found all these examples, and they think that they can stretch that out to say, therefore, it must be prime for for all values of n. Well, well, all it would take to disprove their claim is to find one counterexample. So check this out. What happens when we let n equal 41? When I have n equals 41, I've got 41 squared minus 41 plus 41. Notice these 41s right here are going to cancel out, and so then I just have 41 squared. I don't even care what that value is. I know that since it's multiplying by itself, it's not prime. Okay, so the value of n equals 41 is a counterexample, which would then prove that conjecture false. So that's what we are looking for when we want a counterexample. We're just trying to find one situation that makes our conjecture invalid. Okay, so you can't do that for a proof. You can't prove just one scenario and expect that to be true for all situations. Um, but you can disprove something with just one example. All right, go practice.